At this moment, the wedding of Sanji and Pudding is taking place. Meanwhile, Luffy's group has planned to disrupt the wedding ceremony and assassinate Big Mom. But Kataku Ri foresaw the future. So, he attempted to assassinate Sanji. Unexpectedly, he managed to dodge. Suddenly, a multitude of Luffy clones emerged from within the cake. It turns out this was Luffy's plan to have Brulee transform various animals into him. Seeing his cake collapsing, Big Mom began to angrily scream. Where are you, Straw Hat? Luffy promptly replied, I'm here, shocking Beiji, unbelievably. This fool revealed his position to a Yonko. So, he rushed to attack Big Mom. Surprisingly, Kataku Ri captured him, because he had seen Luffy intending to shatter the picture of Mother Carmel. When he was about to deal with Luffy, Jinbei swiftly rushed in to rescue him, leaving Big Mom astonished as she inquired, What are you doing, Jinbei? Jinbei replied, I will leave your crew and officially join the Straw Hat crew, Big Mom said. Then you must leave half of your lifespan with me, turns out, that's the price for leaving her crew. So, Jinbei agreed. Big Mom immediately released her Conqueror's Haki, and utilized her Devil Fruit power to take away Jinbei's lifespan. But unexpectedly, she couldn't extract Jinbei's lifespan. It turns out that Big Mom's power only takes effect when others are afraid of her. They wondered, why isn't he afraid of Mother Big Mom? Jinbei stated, I am a member of the future Pirate King's crew. What chance does a Yonko have at intimidating me? Which instantly shocked everyone present. Infuriated, Big Mom immediately launched an attack on both Jinbei and Luffy. Suddenly, someone shattered the picture of Mother Carmel, instantly shocking Big Mom. It turned out that the person who broke the image was Brooke. At this moment, Big Mom lost control. Beiji realized that his and Luffy's plan had succeeded. While Sanji was planning to take Pudding away, he was stopped by Big Mom's third son, Daifuku. His power allowed him to summon a genie lamp to attack Sanji. Meanwhile, Sanji's family was captured by Parispero, Big Mom's eldest son. Now, Sanji's father realized that the children he had taken pride in had no emotions, and he had been tricked by Big Mom into acquiring the biological weapons of Germa 66. Beiji noticed that Kataku Ri had headed towards Luffy, so Beiji stepped in to block him, allowing Luffy to continue the plan to assassinate Big Mom. Beiji pulled out his gun and attacked Kataku Ri, while Luffy was trying to run towards Big Mom. Suddenly, Oven, Big Mom's fourth son, intercepted Luffy, so Brooke stood up to hinder him and help Luffy. Luffy pressed forward once again, but Kataku Ri continued his pursuit, despite Jinbei's continuous interference. However, he still managed to catch Luffy, thinking that everything was under control. Unexpectedly, Luffy held up the shattered picture for Big Mom to see, causing her to lose complete control and scream loudly, releasing the conqueror's hockey of a Yonko, causing everyone to pass out. Fortunately, Luffy's group had prepared by covering their ears. Seizing that opportunity, Sanji immediately rushed to rescue his emotionless family. Beiji realized that Big Mom was weakening, so he brought out his cannon to attack Big Mom. But Big Mom remembered her past, along with Mother Carmel, helping her regain her consciousness, making the cannonballs unable to touch her. Beiji recognized the plan had failed, so he immediately signaled Luffy's group to leave. Meanwhile, Caesar was waiting to transport the whole group into the mirror world. But unexpectedly, the mirror shattered, making the entire group think that this time they wouldn't be able to escape. While they were being surrounded by Big Mom's children, Beiji used his devil fruit power, transforming his body into a giant fortress cannon, and his crew launched an attack to assist Luffy's group in escaping inside. As for Caesar, he was being intercepted by Kataku Ri, to reclaim Brulee from their hands. At this moment, only Nami's group remained outside. Nami's entire group had been captured by Big Mom's children. Sanji realized that the situation was dire, so he immediately signaled his father and siblings to come to their rescue, Jerma 66 then swung into action, and they all transformed, much like the Power Rangers. This enabled them to not only possess super speed, and also possess tremendous strength, causing Parispero to realize that this was the technology they sought. He then attempted to attack them, so, he was punched by Ichi and sent flying. Niji promptly rushed to save Chopper. Yanji effortlessly pinned down the genie to rescue Carrot. Reiju rushed forward and delivered a kick to free Nami. Finally, Sanji and the entire group immediately ran into the fortress. Realizing that Big Mom still hadn't regained her consciousness, Beiji rushed straight to crush her, but unexpectedly, he was stopped by Parispero and Kataku Ri, rendering his fortress unable to move anymore. At this moment, they were all surrounded, inside the fortress, 
Beiji realized the plan had failed, so they all had to find a way to escape immediately. Meanwhile, Big Mom had also regained her composure, recognizing that Beiji had betrayed her, which left her infuriated, continuously pounding on the fortress, Beiji inside was also injured. Even though Shifan stepped forward to ask her to stop, she didn't care and was determined to capture Luffy and the others. When Luffy was about to confront her, so, Chopper promptly intervened to block him, suddenly, Beiji mentioned that they still had a chance to survive, by having him transform back to normal, so that Caesar could take him away, instantly making Caesar frightened out of his wits. At this moment, Sanji's father asked again, why did you save us? It turned out that since he was young, Sanji had always been regarded by him as a failed product, so Sanji deeply resented him, Sanji said, you're not my father, so never appear in front of me again, then he promised not to interfere in Sanji's life anymore. So, Judge decided to leave with Sanji's siblings, hindering Big Mom and aiding the group's escape. Seeing that everything was ready, Beiji immediately retracted the fortress and transformed back to normal to face Big Mom. As the group had just exited, they were continuously fired upon. Fortunately, Germa 66 intervened to assist them, so Caesar promptly followed the plan to transport Beiji away. Big Mom, in anger, attacked Reiju with flames, causing her to fall back. Meanwhile, Ichi remained unconcerned, mentioning that the weak would be eliminated, as they had no emotions whatsoever. On the other hand, Luffy wanted to save Reiju. At this moment, as Big Mom was about to use Zeus to attack Reiju, Luffy and Sanji rushed to intercept. However, Big Mom remained unfazed, so Sanji carried Luffy and Reiju away. Big Mom taunted, have you forgotten what you said to me on Fishman Island, Straw Hat? You coward. This immediately made Luffy furious. He was determined to punch this old hag once again. And so, Luffy unleashed Gear 4 and declared, I am the one who will become the Pirate King. While Caesar was still trying to escape with Beiji. But he was constantly chased by Big Mom's children. Fortunately, Germa 66 managed to halt them in their tracks. Caesar kept thinking he was about to escape. But unexpectedly, he was confronted by Perispero, who erected a candy barrier, blocking his way. So, Sanji's three siblings continued to unleash their superhuman strength. Together, they punched through his candy wall. This made Caesar realize there was still a chance to escape. Luffy rushed in to punch Big Mom directly, but it was like a mosquito bite to Big Mom. Suddenly, Luffy ran out of hockey. So, Sanji grabbed him again and ran away, just as Big Mom was about to capture them. Judge stepped in to shield Sanji's escape. Unexpectedly, he was caught by Big Mom. She then released Zeus and struck a powerful lightning bolt at Judge, incapacitating him. As Big Mom was about to deal with him, Sanji's siblings returned to rescue their father. Meanwhile, Sanji's group was pursued closely by the three individuals. Consequently, Sanji and Reiju turned back to counterattack them, while Germa 66 was still attempting to hinder Big Mom's crew. Caesar was trying to make his escape, however, he was once again intercepted by Brule. Despite their efforts, Big Mom and her crew were overwhelmingly powerful, easily subduing and capturing all of Sanji's siblings. While everyone was in danger, Kataku Re foresaw the future and realized that nearby, individuals were fighting over the treasure box from Fishman Island. Unintentionally, the box fell down to the castle, triggering a massive explosion. The explosion caused Big Mom's cake castle to collapse as it turned out that the box Luffy had given to Big Mom as a ransom for Fishman Island contained explosives. The king and the duke had planted the explosives within the box. With the castle crumbling, Big Mom's crew lost balance and fell down, and Big Mom herself rolled off the castle. This outcome left Beiji feeling victorious without having to fight. The collapsing cake castle posed a threat to Big Mom's kingdom and her citizens. In this moment, Sanji carried Luffy back inside Beiji's body. Recognizing the opportunity to escape, Caesar immediately took them away. Everyone believed that the entire city would be destroyed, but unexpectedly, Big Mom's head chef used his abilities to transform the collapsing castle into an actual cake. Therefore, ensuring the safety of all the citizens within the city, at this point, the enemies were determined to capture Luffy's group. On Beiji's side, he felt safe and released everyone. Although they didn't manage to assassinate Big Mom, they succeeded in destroying the castle and her wedding plans. Beiji decided to leave first. Meanwhile, Big Mom was becoming furious because Luffy had destroyed her wedding cake. This caused panic among her children, as they knew that Big Mom's anger could lead to the destruction of whole cake island. Recognizing that there was no way to stop her, 
So, Perispero immediately stepped up to deceive Big Mom. He claimed they still had a spare cake, but the Straw Hat Pirates had taken it. Big Mom promptly warned, If you're lying, I'll take away your lifespan. So, Big Mom immediately mounted Zeus and pursued the Luffy group. Meanwhile, Perispero was feeling fearful as the head chef had been injured. Leaving him with little time to make another cake, Kataku re realized that if Big Mom were to return, the whole cake island would be destroyed. Luckily, Pudding arrived and said that she and Chiffon could make another wedding cake. On Luffy's side, they encountered the hypnotic forest's King Bomb again, so they persuaded him to become their mode of transportation. However, Big Mom caught up to them. While Luffy was determined to fight her, he was immediately stopped by Jinbei, reminding him that their priority was to return to the sunny ship. Suddenly, Big Mom drew her sword and struck directly at Luffy's group with a powerful blow, sending them all flying and even piercing through a nearby mountain. Fortunately, Luffy's group managed to remain safe. As Big Mom prepared to strike again, Nami stepped up and used a thundercloud ball to lure Zeus to eat it. This made Big Mom's strike slip and she fell down. Finally, the group spotted the sunny ahead. Unexpectedly, Zeus caught up with them and requested more thunderclouds to eat. Nami recognized that Zeus was very eager for food, so she immediately tempted him, saying, If you agree to be my servant, I'll provide you with food to eat. Unexpectedly, Big Mom caught up and continued using Prometheus to create a massive fireball in the sky, so he set King Bomb and the entire seductive forest ablaze, forcing Luffy's group to continue fleeing. Meanwhile, Pudding had found Beiji, seeking Chiffon's help to bake a new wedding cake, if not, when Big Mom returns, she will destroy the entire cake island. Everyone thought that Pudding was trying to save the kingdom, but her true intention was to assist Sanji, on Luffy's side, they were trying to run towards the sea. Nami realized that if Zeus returned, they would have no way to escape, so, she kept summoning bolts of lightning to lure him away. When Prometheus pursued them, Jinbei used water to stop him, extinguishing his flames, this allowed the group to continue escaping together, however, Big Mom caught up and kept attacking them relentlessly. As a result, they found themselves surrounded once again. Suddenly, Zeus rushed to eat Nami's weather egg, causing him to lose control and transform into a massive black cloud. Realizing this as an opportunity for a counterattack, Nami seized the moment and directed Zeus's lightning towards Big Mom. Meanwhile, Chopper and Brooke had returned to the Sunny using the submarine. Both of them assumed that Luffy's group had already returned. Unexpectedly, it turned out to be Perispero and Kataku Ri. Turns out they had infiltrated the ship using the Mirror World. So both of them decided to fight to regain control of the ship. On Luffy's side, they thought they had defeated Big Mom, only to find out that she wasn't harmed at all. So they had no choice but to continue running. At this moment, Brooke played his music for the soldiers, causing their souls to be expelled. It turns out that Brooke's power can nullify Big Mom's devil fruit abilities. Chopper utilized his kung fu point to knock away several soldiers. Meanwhile, Pudding and Chiffon spotted Sanji and immediately caused Pudding to become infatuated with him, because during the wedding ceremony, Sanji had complimented Pudding's third eye, saying it was beautiful. Pudding was surprised and asked why he found her eyes beautiful, as she had always been seen as a freak in her family. Pudding quickly approached them and shared a plan to help stop Big Mom's madness. Sanji, however, got distracted by Pudding's appearance. Chiffon explained that Big Mom's rage was due to the ruined wedding cake. They hoped that Sanji could make a new cake for Big Mom. That way, they would have a chance to escape from here. Sanji decided to go with Pudding to bake the cake. But Big Mom was still in a frenzy and attacking them. Fortunately, Sanji managed to leave in time. Meanwhile, Luffy's group managed to avoid Big Mom's attacks. On the other hand, Brook and Chopper were still trying to reclaim the ship. However, the enemies kept emerging from the mirror world. Brook then decided to engage Perispero. But to his surprise, Perispero was too powerful and knocked Brook away. He immediately used his candy devil fruit power to capture Chopper and Brook, causing both of them to transform into candy. Luffy's group continued to be under attack by Big Mom. Perispero thought that Luffy's group couldn't possibly survive, but they managed to overcome the forest and reach the ship. Meanwhile, Luffy was surprised to see them on his own ship. Perispero transformed into a lion head made of candy and attacked. Luffy countered by using his Red Hawk technique, delivering a fiery punch that melted Perispero's candy shield. However, Luffy was determined to face Kataku Ri directly. So, he also used hockey and punched back at Luffy, causing him to be thrown back. Realizing Kataku Ri's strength, undeterred, 
Luffy continued his barrage of attacks against Katakuri, but even with Haki, he couldn't land a hit. Eventually, Katakuri managed to catch Luffy and deliver a powerful punch. At this point, everyone had boarded the ship, preparing to escape. Suddenly, Parasparo used his candy to immobilize the ship, rendering it unable to move. Meanwhile, Big Mom continued her rampage, intending to attack them. Pedro realized that it was the ability of the candy human that was causing this, so he immediately charged forward to attack him. He rushed forward to confront him, but unexpectedly, he was easily defeated by Parasparo. It turned out that Pedro had a connection to the Pirate King, Roger, having admired him since childhood. However, upon learning that Roger had been executed, Pedro was deeply saddened, so he also decided to set out to the sea like Roger, but later, because he infiltrated Big Mom's territory and lost 50 years of lifespan, so this time, Pedro came back and had everything meticulously prepared for this situation. Immediately making Parasparo extremely terrified, Carrot realized that he was intending to sacrifice himself to help everyone escape from here. So, Pedro lit the fuse, creating a massive explosion, helping the whole group's ship escape from the candy pile. Carrot remembered Pedro once saying, One day, you'll see the importance of helping Luffy and his teammates. At this moment, his candy power had been nullified. While Carrot was feeling very sad, because she always considered Pedro her mentor, he had taught Carrot so much about this world. At this point, only Katakuri remained. Suddenly, Carrot went into a frenzy and charged at him, but he was too powerful and easily stopped her, pinning her to the ground. When Carrot felt herself too weak, Luffy stepped forward and said, release Carrot to me. So Luffy used Gear 3 to capture Katakuri. Nami was planning to use the Sunny's coup de burst technique to escape. Unexpectedly, Big Mom regained her composure and caught the ship. Big Mom began to wildly devour the Sunny. Suddenly, Nami and Carrot noticed that Parasparo was still alive. At that point, Luffy noticed Brulee coming out from a mirror. He immediately grabbed her and said, I'll be back soon. Leave the rest to all of you. Fortunately, the ship had just been refueled with cola. So Jinbei immediately took control and made it soar upwards, causing both Big Mom and her crew to be flung back behind. Luffy and Katakuri had entered the mirror world by now. Luffy said, Here, I can freely fight you now. Unexpectedly, he smashed the mirror leading back to his own ship. Katakuri realized that Luffy intended to engage him in a decisive battle. He remarked, You're not my match, Straw Hat, Luffy retorted. I will definitely defeat you in return. Some of the soldiers thought Luffy wouldn't be able to defeat Katakuri, because he has a bounty of over 1 billion belly. So Luffy immediately launched an attack on him. But unexpectedly, he was very fast at blocking and evading his attacks. Meanwhile, with Nami's group, they had successfully escaped outside and noticed that Luffy had broken the mirror that would have led him back. However, they still believed in their captain's abilities to win. As they were about to leave, they realized that Big Mom was still pursuing them. She was riding on the candy created by Parasparo. This angered Carrot as Pedro had sacrificed his life, yet Parasparo was still alive. Meanwhile, he had only lost one arm, so he used candy to create a new arm. While Luffy continued his relentless attacks on Katakuri, he was surprised to see that Katakuri could sprout numerous arms to block his punches. Katakuri then began to counterattack Luffy, repeatedly punching him into the wall, saying, You're still weak, Straw Hat. However, Luffy refused to give in, continuing his assault on Katakuri. At this moment, Katakuri utilized his future sight hockey and foresaw that Luffy intended to inflate his fist, so he extended a colossal arm, twice the size of Luffy's fist, to clash with him. Despite Luffy putting all his strength into the punch, Katakuri remained vastly superior and overwhelmed him completely, and once again, he struck Luffy, sending him flying away. Surprisingly, Luffy still refused to give up. He turned around and employed two colossal punches to attack him. Consequently, Katakuri retaliated with his own strikes, so Luffy continued his assault with a kick towards him, but he managed to dodge it and countered with a move similar to Luffy's, striking back at him causing Luffy to collapse, on Pudding's side, she successfully managed to bring Sanji into the cake-making factory. Sanji had just written down the cake recipe, it left all the chefs in astonishment, Sanji, being a culinary genius, was about to create an incredibly delicious cake that would captivate Big Mom's senses, so, everyone started working together, on Katakuri's side, he thought he had won, but unexpectedly, Luffy stood up again, Katakuri said, 
Your current strength can't defeat me. He continued to unleash a barrage of punches, but Katakuri could see into the future and easily dodged them. Even countering with moves identical to Luffy's, this caused Luffy to fall down once again. Suddenly, Brule managed to find another mirror that connected to the sunny ship. So, they intended to set Luffy's ship on fire. Luffy immediately launched an attack on them, but he was continuously blocked by Katakuri. At this moment, Luffy grabbed a mirror shard to communicate with his companions. While they were being pursued by Big Mom, Nami heard Luffy's voice and realized that the ship was on fire. Luffy instructed them to destroy all the mirrors on the ship so that he could focus on fighting Katakuri. On Nami's side, they were about to be hit by a tidal wave caused by Big Mom. However, Jinbei sensed the direction of the wave and reassured everyone to leave it to him. He then steered the ship to reverse against the tidal wave, making everyone think they would die. But unexpectedly, they survived. Turns out Jinbei was maneuvering the ship within the wave, making everyone amazed at Jinbei's exceptional ship steering skills. While the soldiers thought they had defeated the Straw Hat group, Nami decided to shatter the mirrors, surprising them, because Nami had faith in her captain, so Luffy could fight Katakuri without worries. At this moment, Nami's group instructed Luffy to distance himself from them to discuss their gathering plan. Consequently, Katakuri seized Luffy and shattered the mirror on his hand, so Luffy had to cover his mouth to prevent his teammates from hearing his screams. At this moment, Katakuri continued his relentless assault, kicking Luffy down to the ground. However, he endured without uttering a sound, not wanting his companions to worry about him. So Luffy still tried to smile and said, I will definitely catch up with you guys quickly. This reassured the group, and they started to leave. Luffy then struggled to get back on his feet. Katakuri realized how determined he was and decided to take out his trident to deal with him. On the other hand, Brule was enthusiastically letting Luffy know, since birth, Katakuri has been able to stand up on his own, and he has never once fallen on his back. Seeing her talk too much, Luffy immediately attacked her. Unexpectedly, he was intercepted by Katakuri and given a warning. What do you think you're doing to my sister? So Katakuri used his trident to attack Luffy, and Luffy countered back. But no matter how Luffy attacked, he was consistently blocked by Katakuri. Katakuri said, You can never land a hit on me, Straw Hat, because you don't have a future. Despite that, Luffy continued to counterattack relentlessly. At this point, Katakuri continued to use Haki to see into the future, allowing him to predict Luffy's next moves, and continued to attack Luffy relentlessly, but still couldn't defeat him, because Luffy could evade his attacks. Luffy didn't understand why he could predict his movements. Then he continued to attack, and this time he caught Luffy, when Katakuri was about to settle him, then Luffy used his leg to grip Katakuri's weapon. Therefore, he was able to evade the attack once again, causing Katakuri to become increasingly furious, because Luffy kept fighting without giving up, so he decided to unleash the power of his Devil Fruit's awakening. The Mochi Mochi no Mi. He turned the entire ground into Mochi and captured Luffy. Then, he manipulated the surrounding walls transformed into a massive mochi cake, intending to crush Luffy until he couldn't breathe. At this moment, Katakuri believed he had won, so his three chefs prepared a light meal for him to regain his energy. He then used mochi to construct a room for himself because when eating, Katakuri didn't want anyone to disturb him. Suddenly, the mochi cake pinning Luffy down began to move. It turned out that he had eaten his way through Katakuri's mochi cake. Luffy realized that Katakuri was inside that room so he inflated his fist and struck a mighty blow at the room, while Katakuri was leisurely lying on his back and enjoying a donut, with an extremely wide mouth. Unexpectedly, this moment was seen by everyone, making them unable to believe that Katakuri, who they admired as cool, was acting like this. At this moment, Katakuri was completely furious. You all saw it, didn't you? He immediately rushed to deal with those who had seen his mouth, leaving only Luffy behind. Unexpectedly, this time his punch was scorching hot, and Luffy continued to be struck by him. It turned out that he was angry because anyone who saw his true form had to die. Unexpectedly, this time Luffy managed to avoid it and even countered by kicking straight into his mouth. At this moment, Luffy still didn't understand why he could easily dodge Katakuri's attacks. Luffy realized. I understand your ability now, Katakuri said. Even if you know, you still can't defeat me. So Katakuri immediately employed his awakening ability to capture Luffy. But Luffy also decided to activate Gear 4. This time, Katakuri's ability couldn't catch Luffy anymore, and he was hit back by a powerful punch from Luffy. 
sending him crashing into the wall. Luffy, on the other hand, recalled the teachings of his master Rayleigh about hockey. As a result, he realized that Katakuri's devil fruit wasn't of the Logia type, but rather the Paramecia type, and the reason he could alter his body to dodge Luffy's attacks, it's because of his advanced observation hockey that he can predict Luffy's punches in advance. So Luffy continuously punched Katakuri, causing him to step back and get injured. Despite this, Katakuri remained determined not to let his back touch the ground. Luffy kept unleashing a flurry of punches, but this time, Katakuri was able to transform his body into mochi to avoid them. So he let Luffy know, my hockey can see into the future, it's because I was too careless just now, you won't land another hit on me. Unexpectedly, Katakuri managed to catch Luffy and transformed his arms into two colossal mochi arms. He immediately threw a powerful punch at Luffy. On the other side, Pudding received news that Luffy was fighting Katakuri, making her worried, and she let Sanji know that Katakuri had never experienced a single defeat. Sanji calmly said, Then today he will taste the flavor of defeat. At this moment, Luffy showed no signs of giving up, he stood up and continued to battle against him. However, Katakuri kept using advanced observation hockey, making it impossible for Luffy to land a hit on him anymore. Eventually, Katakuri managed to defeat Luffy once again. Suddenly, Luffy's Gear 4 reached its limit. He had no choice but to flee because he couldn't continue using hockey for about 10 minutes. Immediately, Katakuri chased after him. Out of the blue, Luffy spotted Brulee hiding nearby. He quickly grabbed her and escaped into another mirror. Unbeknownst to him, this mirror led to an island that Big Mom was wreaking havoc on in search of Luffy and her wedding cake. Coincidentally, Big Mom caught sight of Luffy, prompting her to give chase. Parasparo also created a candy wall to obstruct Luffy, but he managed to jump over it. While Big Mom was still pursuing Luffy, Sanji's wedding cake was completed. They intended to bring it to Big Mom. However, they were suddenly halted by Oven. He seized Chiffon, suspecting that she might betray their mother again. Pudding wanted to help her sister, but Sanji prevented her from doing so to avoid arousing suspicion. But Sanji didn't know how to rescue Chiffon without revealing his identity. As he was about to deal with Chiffon's situation, her father rushed in to save his daughter. So Oven intended to deal with him first. Seizing this opportunity, Sanji swiftly lunged and delivered a powerful kick to him. Sanji then quickly took Chiffon and escaped. While Oven was still unaware of who attacked him, he was certain that it wasn't the old man. Meanwhile, Chiffon remained unaware of the identity of the old man. Then Oven jumped onto the cake carriage and found Chiffon. Suddenly, he received information that Beiji was approaching to rescue Chiffon. So, he decided to use Chiffon as leverage against Beiji. Just as he thought Beiji would surrender, unexpectedly, he was immediately attacked by Beiji. With the status of a boss, Beiji didn't want to submit to anyone. Further infuriating Oven, releasing his hot devil fruit power, he intended to capture Beiji. Just then, Beiji's ship rushed ashore to rescue Chiffon. At this moment, Beiji's ship had rushed towards the shore to pick up Chiffon. So, Sanji promptly kicked the wedding cake carriage up into the air. At this moment, Luffy was still running around to recover his strength. He realized his weakness was in prolonged battles. Remembering Rayleigh's teachings about hockey, he recalled the words that if he faced stronger opponents, he would grow stronger as well. With this in mind, Luffy decided to train his observation hockey to see into the future. On Katakuri's side, he was still standing, waiting for Luffy, thinking that Luffy had given up. Unexpectedly, Luffy quickly turned back and appeared right in front of Katakuri. On Sanji's side, he had safely kicked the wedding cake onto Beiji's ship, reuniting him with his wife and child. At this moment, Oven stepped forward to showcase his strength, intending to use his hand to stop the ship but unexpectedly getting crushed instead. Chiffon, on the other hand, still didn't know who this old man was. Since she was taken away by Big Mom at a young age, she never got the chance to know her father's face. Finally, they managed to escape out to the sea. Suddenly, Sanji felt the sea getting hotter. It turned out that Oven had used his devil fruit power to boil the seawater. He was determined to catch them all. But then this old man appeared and struck him on the head, infuriating Oven. He quickly turned back to deal with the old man first. While Chiffon still didn't know who he was, her child seemed happy to see him, he said, you must be truly happy, Chiffon, then, Oven proceeded to execute him, however, thanks to this distraction, Sanji's group managed to escape, on Big Mom's side, they had located Nami's group, and they were closing in on them, Jinbei realized that they were facing some of Big Mom's strongest children, 
Meanwhile, Big Mom herself had become very thin due to hunger. Seeing everyone in a difficult situation, Carrot recalled the words that Pedro had once said, she will definitely become a true warrior. Carrot said to everyone, let me handle them, and Carrot began to look up at the moon. It turns out today is the full moon. Suddenly, Carrot began to transform. This is the unique ability of the Mink tribe. The moon will help them transform into the Sulong state. With just a leap, Carrot was able to glide across the sea's surface and approach Daifuku's ship. At this moment, both the strength and speed of Carrot were at a whole new level. Effortlessly taking down all the soldiers on the ship, much to Daifuku's frustration, making Daifuku furious, as she had taken away their ship's steering wheel, he immediately summoned his genie lamp to attack Carrot. However, Carrot's speed was simply too fast, leaving him unable to catch up with her. On Luffy's side, he was still in the midst of battling with Katakuri. He began closing his eyes and sensing Katakuri's attacks, yet he continued to be overwhelmed and defeated by him. Despite this, Luffy kept getting up to try again, declaring, I will definitely defeat you. Luffy persisted in launching attacks against Katakuri, but due to Katakuri's future sight ability, he managed to continuously take down Luffy. On Sanji and Beiji's side, they had a disagreement. It turned out that Beiji wanted to poison Big Mom's wedding cake, but as a chef, Sanji didn't allow that. So, Sanji offered him a taste of the cake. Immediately, the deliciousness of the cake made Beiji collapse. As a result, he agreed with Sanji's perspective. Meanwhile, Nami's group was still surrounded by Big Mom's fleet. Despite Carrot's efforts in destroying many of their ships, it had left her exhausted. Seizing the opportunity, Daifuku immediately launched an attack on her. Fortunately, Brooke managed to rush over and bring Carrot back to the ship just in time. Carrot returned to her normal state. Suddenly, Big Mom went berserk again. She merged with her three homies and leapt onto the Thousand Sunny. Demanding the wedding cake, seeing one of the Yonko on their ship terrified the group. Big Mom enveloped Napoleon with flames and attacked Jinbei. Jinbei, using hockey, attempted to block her strike but a single blow sent him flying into the water. Big Mom continued her assault on the other crew members and even set the Sunny on fire. Unexpectedly, Jinbei returned and unleashed a massive stream of water onto Big Mom. Extinguishing the flames, he followed up with a powerful punch to her abdomen, sending her flying off the Sunny. However, Big Mom remained determined to chase after them and split their ships in two. In response, Brooke decided to take action. He asked Big Mom, can you show me your panties? leaving everyone shocked. Unexpectedly at this moment, Brooke split Zeus in two. Nami seized the opportunity and used her lightning ball to electrocute Zeus, which in turn attacked Big Mom, causing her to fall. The Nami group was elated to have escaped Big Mom's pursuit, and Brooke even managed to steal Zeus from her, so Nami immediately threatened Zeus, forcing him to become her servant. However, Big Mom remained unfazed and continued to chase after Nami's group, on Luffy's side. He was still being attacked by Katakuri, despite falling down numerous times, he kept getting back up. Nearby, another sister of Katakuri observed the battle. Seeing Luffy as nothing more than a sandbag for Katakuri, they found it amusing. At that moment, Luffy realized that the key to observation hockey was maintaining composure. Unexpectedly, this time he managed to dodge, surprising Katakuri. This led Katakuri to immediately launch another attack denying Luffy the chance to adapt further. Suddenly, Luffy began to grasp the meaning behind Rayleigh's words. During his training, Luffy was always scolded by his mentor and told that every attack had a purpose. So this time, Luffy closed his eyes and focused on sensing. Unexpectedly, he truly managed to dodge the attacks, and caught a fleeting glimpse of Katakuri's attacks in advance. This surprised Katakuri and led him to retaliate immediately. He said, are you also foreseeing the future like I do? This made Katakuri decide to resolve Luffy immediately. On the other hand, Big Mom was extremely angry and transformed Prometheus into a massive ball of fire. She intended to incinerate the entire sunny ship. Suddenly, she caught a whiff of the scent of cake. It turned out that Sanji was bringing the cake over. After strategizing with Beiji, Sanji and Pudding had headed back towards the sunny ship to reunite with everyone. Big Mom, on the other hand, continued to chase after the cake on Beiji's ship. Big Mom's children realized that they were trying to lure her away. At this moment, Luffy was able to see into the future and started evading Katakuri's attacks. However, he still wasn't completely skilled at it. Suddenly, Luffy was ambushed by Katakuri's younger sister. She shot a dart into his leg, making Luffy unable to move his leg. 
so, he was immediately struck in the abdomen by Katakuri's attack. Seeing Luffy in great pain, it brought joy to the enemies, at this point, Katakuri still hadn't realized. He continued to relentlessly attack Luffy, however, he started to feel that something was off about Luffy. He couldn't understand why Luffy could make such a mistake, despite being knocked down multiple times. Luffy still tried his best to stand up in front of Katakuri. This time, the girl intended to sneak another attack on Luffy. However, unexpectedly, Luffy managed to dodge her needle. However, he still collapsed. Katakuri immediately realized that this bunch had disrupted his battle. Seeing Luffy struggling with the paralyzing toxin, making Katakuri very angry, he immediately walked towards them. She thought she would receive praise from her older brother. Unexpectedly, Katakuri stabbed himself in the abdomen just like he did with Luffy. This surprised everyone, and he began to pull down his cloth to cover his mouth, making the whole group terrified, as Katakuri's mouth was too hideous. He scolded them for daring to disrupt his battle. Suddenly, they began to despise Katakuri, mocking him for no longer being impressive in their eyes. It turns out that since he was a child, Katakuri had always been considered a monster because of his wide mouth and sharp iron teeth. At this point, Katakuri didn't bother to pay attention to them anymore, disregarding them as they chased after him to take pictures. So, Katakuri returned to stand in front of Luffy. Luffy said, those guys are really noisy. Both of them immediately unleashed their conqueror's hockey. This caused the others to faint immediately. She wondered, is it possible? He also has conqueror's hockey? In the end, only Luffy and Katakuri remain. At this point, Katakuri began to respect Luffy as his opponent. Luffy also realized that Katakuri was very fair, and so, both of them decided to engage in a serious battle with each other. Making them very excited, they continuously launched powerful attacks at each other with great determination. Thanks to his advanced hockey, Katakuri was able to dominate over Luffy. Luffy also used future sight hockey to block his attacks. While both of them engaged in continuous combat, Luffy recalled his training in future sight hockey with his master Rayleigh, until evening. He continued practicing with the creatures in the forest. Day after day, Luffy's skills improved significantly. Rayleigh then explained to him that to master advanced future sight hockey, he needed to fight strong opponents. At this point, Luffy could clearly see Katakuri's attacks and effortlessly dodged them all. This forced Katakuri to push himself even harder against Luffy. He unleashed a powerful blaze of punches to knock Luffy away. But Luffy quickly retaliated with a punch of his own. This left Katakuri feeling fatigued and made him realize that Luffy was indeed a worthy adversary. Luffy confidently declared, it's time to end this fight. So, he immediately activated Gear 4th once again. But this time in Snakeman form, it turned out that during his training with Rayleigh, Luffy found that his Boundman form, while powerful, hindered his mobility. Therefore, the Snakeman form he was using now enhanced his speed significantly. Surprisingly, even Katakuri couldn't predict Luffy's punches this time. Thus, he resorted to using advanced hockey to dodge and turned his own arm into an iron mace to attack Luffy. Even more, it was so sticky that Luffy couldn't break free. He then exerted all his strength to slam Luffy straight into the ground, creating a deep crater. However, even with that blow, it wasn't enough to defeat Luffy. He immediately turned around and swiftly attacked Katakuri with tremendous speed, delivering a punch right to his face. Katakuri challenges, come at me, straw hat. Luffy leaps up and unleashes a barrage of punches at him. Despite continuously taking hits, Katakuri manages to get close and lands a kick on Luffy. Katakuri says, this final blow will end you. Straw Hat, Luffy replies, no, I'm the one who will win. Then, he rolls his body into a ball and rolls towards Luffy once again. To gather momentum, Katakuri prepares to launch a powerful, iron mace, attack at Luffy. In response, Luffy unleashes his strongest punch. Their punches collide head on. Outside, Big Mom's children have regrouped ready to capture Luffy once he emerges. They remain confident that their older brother will emerge victorious. Meanwhile, Sanji and Pudding are aware of their plan and continue to monitor the situation. Pudding felt quite shy and awkward around Sanji. Suddenly, Sanji spoke up, admitting that despite knowing it's Big Mom's plan, he is genuinely happy to have Pudding play the role of his wife. This immediately brought tears to Pudding's eyes, as she was touched by the fact that someone didn't despise her. In response, Pudding rushed to Sanji and gave him a kiss, on Luffy and Katakuri's side. Their intense battle had reached its conclusion. 
Luffy had exhausted himself and returned to his normal state. However, Katakuri also fell down defeated. At this point, Luffy had already regained consciousness, and he tried to move towards the gathering point with everyone. Suddenly, Katakuri also regained his composure, surprising Luffy as he stood up and resumed his fighting stance. Unexpectedly, Katakuri spoke, Someday, you will come back to defeat Big Mom, won't you? Luffy replied, Of course, because I am the one who will become the Pirate King. Finally, Katakuri fell backward. Luffy realized that he had won, but he left his black hat covering Katakuri's mouth as a sign of respect for his opponent. At this moment, Luffy returned to find Brule, only to unexpectedly see Peckham's capturing her to help him. Peckham's then took Luffy away with him. Meanwhile, Nami's group was waiting outside Kakao Island. Big Mom's crew was still waiting for Luffy to exit the mirror, and Peckham's informed Luffy that his Sulong form could help him escape. It turns out Peckham's did this because he had faith in Luffy. Even though he knew he would lose control in his Sulong form, Peckham's threw Brule outside, surprising everyone. He looked at the moon and began transforming into his Sulong state. Oven became furious because the person who emerged wasn't Luffy. Oven punched him, causing Luffy to be propelled out of Peckham's body. Therefore, they immediately launched an attack on Luffy, thinking they were about to capture him, but Sanji swiftly appeared to rescue Luffy. Meanwhile, Peckham's had become uncontrollable, attacking everyone around. While Sanji was planning to escape, he noticed Peckham's being surrounded by their enemies. This distraction led Sanji to take a blow and crash onto the ground. Just when they thought they had caught them, the island unexpectedly came under attack. It turned out that the Germa 66 army had arrived to assist them. So, Sanji's family also appeared to protect him, with bullets fired at them being as insignificant as mosquito bites, so they immediately protected Sanji and led him out of there, while Sanji was trying to get Luffy to the port to reunite with the rest of the crew. Then Brule informed the entire Big Mom pirates that Katakuri had been defeated by Luffy. This greatly shocked the entire crew to their core, as they couldn't accept that Luffy had defeated their invincible member, as a result, their determination to capture Luffy grew even stronger. When Oven was about to attack Sanji, Ichiji intervened and defeated Oven. Sanji was taken aback, as he had been mistreated by his three older siblings when he was younger, and now they were coming to his aid. Yanji and Niji also rushed to support Sanji in his escape, allowing him to break free from the city. This time, Reiju came to his aid. It turns out that since they were young, Reiju had been the one to help Sanji escape from the clutches of Jerma 66. While everyone was worried, they finally spotted Sanji and Luffy. At this moment, Sanji had already brought Luffy onto the ship. Luffy was asleep, completely exhausted. Meanwhile, Big Mom was still chasing after the wedding cake on Beiji's ship, so she found the wedding cake, and Luffy's group thought they had escaped. However, they were still surrounded, and the enemies were determined to capture the entire group. Suddenly, a giant figure emerged from the sea, surprising Jinbei who jumped into the water. It turned out that his sun pirates had also arrived. On Big Mom's side, she was acting deliriously due to her craving. Parasparo started to worry. If the taste of the cake didn't satisfy her, she might destroy the whole cake island. Unexpectedly, as Big Mom took a bite, she collapsed backward, making everyone think she was poisoned. But it turned out the cake tasted so good that she fell into a state of bliss. Shafan and Beiji realized that Sanji's efforts had been successful. On Luffy's side, Jinbei's sun pirates came to their aid, helping them create a path to escape from the island. However, Oven was determined not to let them get away. He heated up the sea, turning it into a boiling cauldron and endangering the fishman pirates, who were at risk of being cooked alive. This led to Luffy's group being once again surrounded, while Big Mom was preoccupied with eating the cake. Luffy's ship came under attack and was set ablaze, but suddenly, the attackers realized that the ship they were targeting was not the Straw Hat pirate ship but the Sun Pirate's ship instead. It turned out that earlier, Wadatsumi had switched the two ships, putting Luffy's ship in his mouth and carrying it away to safety. Realizing that they had been deceived, Oven continued his attack on the sea. He continuously targeted Wadatsumi, so he had to release Luffy's group. Despite this, Wadatsumi was determined to help Luffy escape to make up for his mistake on Fishman Island. At this moment, the Fishman Pirates also rose up with determination to protect Luffy's group. Seeing his fishman pirates sacrificing themselves in battle, Jinbei made the decision to stay and fight alongside them, and he promised Luffy that he would definitely survive and return. Luffy said, you have to survive, 
We will be waiting for you in Wano country. On the other side, Big Mom had finished eating the wedding cake, which helped her regain her composure to return and capture Luffy's group. Beiji realized that his mission to distract Big Mom and buy time had been successfully accomplished. Jinbei also returned to battle with the Fishmen Pirates. They formed a circle and created a massive water vortex on the sea's surface, preventing the pursuing enemies from reaching Luffy's group. In the end, they successfully helped the entire group escape. Meanwhile, the journalist Morgans realized that this was a sensational news story. Luffy would become a new emperor in the future. Today's video ends here. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni-chan in the upcoming videos. Thank you for following along, much love.